Today I'm going to talk more about inductors. In the previous video I talked about the inductor basics. Basically an inductor is just a coil of wire. And an inductor does what it does because of the interaction between magnetic fields and electrons. Basically what happens is if I push an electric current into the inductor that causes a magnetic field to build. Only when the current is flowing do I have a magnetic field. And when I push a current in I get a building magnetic field. So the magnetic field is moving and that moving magnetic field induces a current that pushes the opposite direction. So when I try to push a current into an inductor the inductor says no you're not either. But after a while that magnetic field stops moving and when it stops moving it no longer interacts with the current and so the current just goes right through. But then when I try to stop the current, that magnetic field collapses and the collapsing magnetic field tries to keep the current going. So an inductor sort of acts like a flywheel. It's hard to get current to go into an inductor, but once it's flowing, it's hard to stop it. Now let's take a look at how we measure inductance and what factors infect the inductance of an inductor. So we measure inductance in a unit called the Henry named after Joseph Henry, who is credited with discovering self-inductance, which is what makes an inductor do what it does. And wrapping our minds around what would make a one Henry inductor is kind of difficult. The official definition has to do with uh, steadily increasing currents and that creates a steadily increasing magnetic field, which creates a steady back voltage. A little hard to wrap our minds around. But if we look at capacitors, Remember that a one farad capacitor could be fairly easily uh, quantified by if we take a one coulomb charge, sort of like I can hold one coulomb of electrons, basically 6.2 times 10 to the 18th electrons, I can hold them in my hand and I stuff them into a capacitor. And after stuffing that one coulomb of charge into a capacitor, I get one volt. I have a one farad capacitor. So a one Henry inductor stores energy in a magnetic field, where a capacitor stores its energy in an electric field. A one Henry inductor stores the same energy in its magnetic field that a one farad capacitor stores in its electric field. So they're sort of like equal and opposite types of components. So a one Henry inductor is the counterpart of a one farad capacitor. They store the same amount of energy just different ways. Now what affects the amount of inductance we have? Well let's say we have an inductor I just draw five turns of wire and put them this far apart. And let's say this particular inductor happens to have one tenth of a Henry or 100 millihenries of inductance. If I put those wires closer together, same diameter, same basic amount of wire, but I push them closer together. Let's see if I can draw that. There we go. So they're twice as close together. I'm going to get more interaction between those wires, more magnetic interaction, more inductance. So that'd be like 200 millihenries. And of course, if I stretch them out, I get less. What if I increase the diameter of the coil? Same number of turns, but it's bigger around. Well, I have more wire interacting with more wire, and so I get more inductance. So. If I double the diameter, I don't know the exact factors, but I'm going to get, let's just assume if I double the diameter, I get double the inductance. If I use bigger diameter wire, what's that going to do? The bigger diameter wire is going to naturally force the coils to be further apart. I'll have fewer coils per inch. So bigger diameter wire will have less inductance. If I wind the wires right next to each other, bigger diameter, I can't get them as close. So I get less inductance with heavier wire. Also, if I simply make the inductor bigger by adding more coils. Same distance, same diameter, but more turns, I get more inductance. So that looks like about you know, 300 millihenries there. So, putting the wires closer together gives me more inductance. Making the coil bigger diameter, which simply adds more wire, more inductance. Add more turns, more inductance. But if I make the turns further apart, 
less inductance, less interaction. And if I use bigger diameter wire, that forces the turns further apart, so bigger diameter wire gives me less inductance. Another way to affect inductance is by what the inductor is wound around. If we wind it around air, we get so much inductance. Let's put some iron inside there. We would normally do that as a laminated core. We would take some what's called soft iron, which is really a type of steel. And the soft iron does not retain a magnetic field. When you put a magnetic field around it, then take it away. It doesn't stay magnetic. So we put some soft iron in there. That's going to concentrate the magnetic field and give me even more inductance. That can be done in two ways. We can either use laminated iron. Let me draw an inductor that has different types of cores. A no core or an air core inductor has no special symbols. Now let's put an iron core in there. We're going to put two solid lines that represents an iron core. So air core, iron core, or the other way to do an iron core is a material called ferrite, which is basically powdered iron mixed with clay. And we can mold that to whatever shape we want. So it's very popular to make cores out of that. And that would be represented by a dashed double line. So air core, iron core, and ferrite core. It's common to make variable capacitors by making a ferrite core that is shaped like a little screw, so it has screw threads on it, and as we turn it, it pulls itself into the inductor, and turn it the other way, it pulls itself out, and we can make a variable inductor. We just turn it with a little screwdriver to change the inductance by using a specially shaped ferrite core. So those are the factors that affect inductance. Now let's take a look at what happens if we put these in a circuit and put them in series and in parallel. Well, if we put inductors in series, it's just adding inductance, it's just like a resistor. So 100 millihenries, 100 millihenries, together, easy peasy. And just like a resistor, if we put inductors in parallel, we have the same effect as resistors. So remember that capacitors, if we put capacitors in parallel, it was like resistors in series. If we put capacitors in series, it was like resistors in parallel. But inductors are just like resistors. So inductors in parallel, together, we have less inductance. So inductors in series are like resistors in series. Inductors in parallel are like resistors in parallel. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.